man, I liked Kyrie's intensity in this game. Uh, Absolutely. I remember, you know, one time Johnny got fouled and people were chirping and everything. And Kyrie got right in there, like, get away, you know, get out of here. And they got in Kyrie's face and he was, he was saying something. I wish he was yeah. mic'd up or something like that. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by Emprise Bank. If you're thinking about starting a business or know someone who is, check out Emprise Bank's SBA loans. It's always good to know your options, and they can be your partner in possible. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back yo, yo. to another episode of No Other Pod. I'm Jimmy, along with my good buddy, Daniel Kuzer. Dan, what's going on, my friend? How's the, uh, how are the first few shows of Jersey Boys? Dude, it's like a rock concert every night. Yeah. I, I just, the way the lighting is and, and the, the crowd getting into it, it's mm-hmm. it's like a show, bro. It's pretty crazy. I uh, I will be going September 27th, and I believe our uh, our man Chris Wright will be joining me. So if there are nice. any listeners out there that would like to uh, maybe make September 27th no other pod night or hey. cut night at uh, Jersey Boys at Topeka Civic Theater, go get your tickets. Wouldn't that be something? Uh, dude, I'm uh, seeing the response that we're getting. I'm jealous that you got to see a, a professional production yeah. of this in Vegas. Like, it's just, it's such a neat situation, man. Everyone's like blown away. It's a good show. I'm excited. So yeah, go check it out if you haven't. Glad that it's uh, off to a good start. Someone said the most wild statement in that we sound better than the four seasons. And I was like, that's <laughs> the most wild thing. I've ever heard today, but thank you. Like, I'll take the compliment. Uh, you, you know, hey, yeah. yeah, everyone has their own opinion when it comes to music taste. Sure. I mean, it, yes, you take it, but it's like, I, that can't possibly be true. <laughs> but uh, I will say we do sound good. I'm one of the most you know successful bands of all time in the Rock and Roll Hall right. of Fame. But, you know, you never know. Exactly. It's a, hey, I'm excited. That's fun. Uh, it was, you know, a strange week in the soccer world. We had... The U.S. men's national team came to uh, Kansas City to play a game. Of yeah, course, that went well. That, yeah, it went, it went great. We'll talk about that later. Um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a, a a week of no other pod if I don't get into a little spat online with some people from St. Louis. So oh, I did that again. Well, they were talking shit about no nobody's at the game in Kansas City soccer capital, and I'm like, first off, U.S. soccer charges way too much for these friendlies. Second off. There was a shit ton of youth soccer happening that day all over. I had a, a, a niece who was having a game at the exact same time as that U.S. soccer game. KU was getting ready to play. The Royals were getting ready to play. K-State was playing. Mizzou was getting ready to play. The Current were getting ready to play at home. There's too much going on. So Quite a bit. Quite a bit, dude. Uh, uh, that night, I, I, I was streaming games back in the green room before the show, and I was like, okay, here's my lineup. Alabama and KU both played at 6. Yep. SKC and KC Current both played at 6.30. Yeah. And it's like, that. at that point, you're just kind of flipping around. All right, this game's boring. Let's go over here. What do they got going on? Whoa, close game Alabama. Whoa, close game KU. Like, it was yeah. a pretty wild night. Alabama played that a little closer than they wanted to until the fourth quarter. What were they doing? They were just, like, <laughs> playing with their food until they were like, hey, let's score a bunch of touchdowns in the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. KU, that was a bummer. I wanted KU to beat uh, Illinois. Uh, That's unfortunate. I mean, the quarterback, yeah. Last, J6, I don't know. not great. Since he JD6, back. also throwing pick sixes, so good times. <laughs> our, our, our producer, Nick, was not happy with the Yes, KU producer play. Nick. And his uh, casual suicide jokes. <laughs> but they will be back at Children's Mercy Park this Friday, question mark, I believe, yeah. hosting UNLV. So it's a uh, short week. Get right back at it for the Jayhawks. And look, I don't know if anybody out there is a college football fan. It seems college football is weird this year. So, you know, just not a lot of teams that look like they're really that good, except for maybe Texas and, I don't know, USC a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's a weird time. So hopefully KU can recreate their success against Lindenwood again at, uh, against UNLV this this Friday night at 6 p.m. But indeed, we'll see. Children's Mercy Park is a, a fun place to see a football game if you can do it. You know, last I looked, tickets were uh, were still pretty pricey for this game. But about a hundred dollars, I'm seeing. Oh, so it dropped a little bit on Seat Geek. I saw that you can get them for like a hundred. 
Okay. Well, the loss probably didn't help, but you know, it's, it's a really fun environment because it's so close to everything. Like you won't, you won't watch a, a D1 college football game like that again in an environment no. where it's that close together. This is the last time they're at Children's Mercy Park this year. I think right. they'll have that their, their, the rest of their home games, quote unquote, will be at Arrowhead. So yeah, uh, I, I, I wish I could get up there, man. I, would absolutely try to give it a shot. Uh, yeah. dollars kind of a little steep for me. I don't know. Might yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, it's it, hopefully a good game. UNLV is a, a decent team. So, yeah. It would be fun. I saw them. They, they released some kind of video uh, online or something, and, and people were like, listen, if KU gets cooked by these guys on Friday, we got a problem. Because it was <laughs> some dance video, and they were just yeah. it was like choreographed or something. It was wild. Well, what I will say, you know what can help if you're looking to buy a hundred dollar ticket. You know what can help with uh, being able to afford the hundred dollar ticket to KU UNLV. No, is uh, if you win five hundred dollars. Oh, and podcast listener, if you would like an extra five hundred dollars, you can go to bluewirepods.com slash survey and complete the Blue Wire audience survey about you and your podcast listening habits for a chance to win five a five hundred dollar gift card. Survey will help create a better advertising experience for audiences and in turn help this show. That's bluewirepods.com slash survey, where all you have to do is answer some simple questions for a chance to win $500. Make sure to read the full terms and disclaimers, plus complete the survey for a chance to win. That's bluewirepods.com slash survey, and the link is also in the show notes of this episode. So there you go. If you haven't done it yet, you still got time to go do it. Make sure you do. (laughs) Let's... Talk sporting Kansas City a little bit okay. because it was uh we had a little bit of time off and then we uh we were back in league play now on the road in in Harrison New Jersey at Red Bull Arena. Have you been to Red Bull Arena before? You have right? Oh yeah, dude. I uh, won a free trip. Let's remember right. that. That was that. Uh, that was that game. That was to Red Bull because I knew you were also at an NYC game, but you that was you, you went separately to an NYC game that trip just to see that experience yeah i think yeah absolutely and it's yeah. dude they put us up in the team hotel shared an elevator with carries of hell of a time there you go did you ask him questions no i was too nervous you just awkward hello mr zvagnin nice to see you yes it was just <laughs> awkward okay i don't even i don't even we weren't even doing this pod yet man it was uh i was not comfortable in speaking to people no i don't this that pod was, has helped me with that that's good yeah. you've done interviews with players by yourself but i couldn't be there yeah, and and but before I was just like I can't talk to this man. Why? Why could I not talk to him? Was that the most <laughs> awkward like elevator experience you've had with like a pseudo celebrity or anything or or somebody who you recognize? Uh, no. I mean, we weren't like decked out in SKC stuff by any means, so it's yeah. not like he. It's not like he knew we were ignoring him or something. Yeah. So for all he knew, we were just randos. Randos. Yeah. Yeah. I think the most awkward one I've ever had is I was in the USC bookstore one time and I was getting on the elevator to go up to where I was working and the elevator opens and it's just Lane Kiffin standing in the elevator. And so I, I got in the elevator, it was just Lane Kiffin and I, and I, I, I said something super stupid. I was just like, I don't know, big, big game Saturday, huh? And he was like, should be a good one. And I was like, you hope you get him, coach. And it was awkward. But just your generic <laughs> shit. That's like when I when I when I painted the wall with Beesler and we had like time to kill and I was like, "Y'all ready for tonight?" <laughs> what a bit? No, I'm not. Like, what's the answer gonna be, dude? Was that 2015 or 2017? Uh, it remember? was. It was 2015. I thought of it today because I, I I I had to. We're moving offices at work, so I had to start packing up all my stuff, and I got a bunch of bobbleheads, and I had the. I think it was from 2017, but it was the Beesler paint the wall bobblehead that they gave out. And I was like, where's, where's Kuzir on this bobblehead? There should be two people here <laughs> on, on the bobblehead paint the wall. Listen, I should have made my own bobblehead with like a spray paint can or something <laughs> and like a magic mirror and like set it up next to that one on my mantle. Ooh, it's not too late. You can still do it. Put it yeah. next to Beesler. You can be best buds. Ooh, ask him one, two, make two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember me, but I made this for you. <laughs> we probably need to have him on here and and laugh about that shenanigans day it would be fun to talk to him now that he's removed from his playing days a little bit he's he's getting back into you know kansas city i mean he's from the kansas city area so he's he's involved and he's probably the next sporting legend at some point so it'd be great to have him on at some point and talk to him about 
sort of, you know, his career and the state of things and what he thinks and, and what this club can do to sort of get back on, on the winning track. But oh yeah, we'll see what we can do. Um, but yeah, this, this game in, in Harrison, New Jersey, I actually like Red Bull Arena. If you've not been able to get out to Red Bull Arena, I've been out there for a, for a game. It wasn't an SKC game, but when I was in New York, I went to a game and it sucks that it's in Harrison, New Jersey, but it's real easy to take a train like right there to the stadium. And and the the arena itself is pretty nice, if I remember correctly. It's it's not bad. I mean, we I remember we went to like an Irish pub beforehand and had some Guinness before walking down there. Uh, and it's it's considerably bigger than sporting. It, it I feel I just googled it. Capacity is twenty five k. So uh, uh, you know, it's just different. It's in New Jersey, kind of in a little industrial district, if I remember correctly. Industrial. Yeah, but uh, it was it was neat. And and isn't it like a three tiered stadium, or is it just two? It's at least two, if not three. Yeah, it's it's different. Um, but I just I remember it's on three, huh? Okay. Yeah, I I just remember it looked pretty cool, and and I had a good experience there um you know it was easy to get in and out of and, and you know you just hop on the train go back to manhattan so now this was pre-pandemic when i was there so i'm I'm judging this off of like you know six seven year old memories but uh it, it's a good stadium if you can get out to a game we probably won't play the red bulls in in a sporting game for another couple of years but you know if you can get out there for a game because they're east eastern the eastern conference oh. So it, I was like, I, why wouldn't we play them next year at home? You mean like we won't play them there? Gotcha. In, in New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. This this was an, an interesting game because, uh, I mean, it was it was close to as as good of a lineup as you can have right now. We went back to that, <clears throat> excuse me, Zorn Basong and Jake Davis double pivot, uh, which I thought was, again, something that I'm enjoying seeing and it's interesting, you know, Peter Vermees has sort of shifted from that standard four, three, three to, it seems like over the last couple months, this four, two, three, one formation is his preferred formation. And you know, it may be open cups clouding my judgment of this a little bit because we've had some success, but I feel like they've been more competitive than they were early on in the season um, with this, this change in formation a little bit. So I don't know. I enjoy seeing it, and and in terms of the Red Bulls, I mean, there were. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. The, the Red Bulls are a pretty decent team. There's not a lot of like star names on the Red Bulls that like, unless you're like a big MLS fan who like is really into watching a lot of teams. Like, sure, there's there's a couple of guys whose names you might recognize: Corey Burke, John Tolkien, you know, etc. But but this is not you know, the Red Bulls of old where they had Kaká or Thierry Henry or Sasha Kleschen or, or, or people who were, you know, big time names. So this is just kind of a solid team that has been good and their defense allowed a lot less goals than Sporting KC has allowed this season. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, and this is another team who's, you know, fighting for, for playoff positioning up there and we're just... We're just trying to, you know, because someone just throw us a life vest, you know, just something. We're just bobbing along out here in the ocean, fighting sharks and and sewage. <laughs> yeah, basically. And you know, it's it's good to see. You know, someone asked us last week. You know, what what is it that you want to see from Sporting KC the remainder of the year? Victories. Victories would be good. Can I say that? Yeah, I would like to see victories. I'd like to see us hold on to a win. Um, but victories would be good. Just improvement and fight would be good too. I want to see which of these players um, feels like they want to be here past this off season and which of these players are really fighting for a chance to be here past this off season, because I think it's pretty evident from everything that Peter Vermees has said is this off season is going to be a potential pivot point for this team. And there will be some significant roster turnover and some of these players, you know, they're, they're continuing to fight for a spot and others I don't know. Maybe not. So, well, so you mentioned Basong and Jake in the midfield, and uh, Basong mentioned how he's, you know, he's really grown to get comfortable with Jake and yeah. uh, enjoys playing there with Jake. So, yeah, uh, not sure if we see this in in the future, but uh, or if this is more of just a, a you know formation that we're forced to to construct right now. Right. I mean, if Basong can continue to play and play well 
in the midfield, we currently have three left backs on the roster. You don't need three left backs full time on the roster. So if he can step in and fill a midfield spot like that, I don't remember his contract situation specifically. It probably is an option for next year. But if he is serviceable and doesn't mind being an affordable rotation player that can play both defender or sort of that double pivot defensive midfielder, that's a valuable type of player. It reminds me of the type of player that somebody like Jimmy Madrondo was back in the day, who he could play left back, he could play midfield, he could go up into the forward position if he needs to. We haven't seen oh, yeah. Song do that, but I'm I'm guessing he has the ability where you could do that in an emergency situation. So I don't hate having a jack of all knife, uh, jack of all trades player like Zoran Basong. Jack of all knife is not the right choice. jack of all knife. We'll take it. Like a jack knife, jack of all trades, but uh, but yeah. I don't know. So it's uh, it, it, it was an intriguing game heading into it. Red Bulls have played that four four two for a while, and um, yeah, I think uh, it's it started off a little slow. But um, maybe we take our first or our break here, and then when we come back from the break, we'll get into the meat of this game. We'll be right back. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals just to save a few bucks. Saving money should be easy with no hoops and no BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for just 15 bucks a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I called them on it. And it turns out it really is that easy to get wireless plans for 15 bucks a month. So to get started, go to mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. There you'll see that right now you can get three-month plans for only 15 bucks a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And if you're worried about keeping your own phone or losing your contacts, with Mint Mobile, you can bring your own phone number along with all of your existing contacts. So find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile right now and get three months of premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. That's mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash KCSNNOP. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on a limited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Well, buddy, I got to tell you, mm-hmm. I uh, had a weird moment yesterday when I was re-watching the KC Current game. Oh, yeah? You know, prepping for the KC Current pod and uh, was seeing online that uh, Patrick Mahomes was at the U.S. Open Cup, and I was like, well, that's impossible. He's at the KC Current game. And I was like, God damn it, I am an <laughs> idiot. I'm, I'm watching the replay right now. This is ridiculous. But I was thinking, like, this is fake news. So, <laughs> have you seen, wrong here? Have you seen the Nebraska quarterback, Dylan Rayola? Yeah, that's some kind of weird cosplay going on. He's just pretending he's Patrick Mahomes. It's, it's I mean, from his warm-up high knee jumps right. to... to to his like rollout passing, I mean, it's uh, I I haven't seen any behind the back shit yet, so I'm sure that's coming. It was one thing. I mean, he had the hairdo and he had the glasses and the little goatee, and he wears number 15 and he kind of carries himself like my like that was all. It was when I saw the jump that he. I'm like, okay, it's getting it's getting a little. Is this some stalkerist stuff? Is this some baby reindeer shit? I don't know if it's creepy, but it, this is like it's border. I mean, it's it's getting to beyond cringe. Like, yeah, this. This is one of those things where this dude's going to be like a junior or senior in college, or if he's good enough to get to the league one day, he's going to look back and be like, ah, I probably shouldn't have done that. I got to be honest, though. If I'm a college kid and Mahomes like tweets at me and is like, go get it, little cuz, or whatever he said, I'd be like, oh, shit, I'm leaning into this. Hard. Taking it up a notch. <laughs> I'm taking it up a notch. Like, look out for the behind the back pass next week. Right. I, 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 I. I don't know. I just would. I know how how you get, you know. But that's where you got to be careful not to like. Okay, you got the acknowledgement. Like that's good. Don't make it weird now where Mahomes is like, okay, like you're not like a little much. This we, we we did it once. We're good. Like go do your own thing too. This guy starts making his own off brand uh, uh, State Farm commercials. Right. So we'll we'll see. But it just <laughs> when you said to Patrick Mahomes, I was like, ah, well. There's one in Nebraska. Okay. There is a Nebraska. That's Nebraska Homes. It's somewhat 
Someone called him Patrick Mapartments. I <laughs> I did. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. That made me laugh. I, Patrick Mapartments. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about this uh, the Sporting KC game. Um, it was it was kind of a weird game because I would say physical game. It was a physical game. Neither team created a ton to start the game for the first 30 minutes or so. And even Peter Ramiz after the game, you know, I asked him, I was the only one on the press conference, by the way. I don't I know. Press conference. What was that about? I, well, shout out to Kurt Austin from Sporting KC Communications. Cause I'm sitting there on the zoom. Sperry was trying to cover uh, the current at the same time. So he texts me, he goes, Hey, I'm not going to be able to be on because black coast press conference is about to start. So just make sure you ask Peter, a couple, you know, make sure he answers some questions. I'm like, okay, I'll get on there. I'm thinking, chat or, or other, fat or somebody is going to be on there and so i'm sitting there in the waiting room and kurt austin from sporting kc thank god he texts me he goes uh just letting you know that you're probably going to be the only one on the press conference and i was like god damn it so i just start typing out questions on my phone to make sure i have something i don't get caught off guard and i'm like is peter going to be in a bad mood because they gave up a late goal and i want one of the questions i wanted to ask was you know they've given up like 16 goals in the last 15 minutes of the game, which is most in the league. But then I got scared, did ask it, but uh, it, it ended up working out okay. Like I think you I didn't ask it in that way, though. Did you? Did you didn't say it was most in the league, right? I don't think I said most in the league, but I said, yeah. You know, it, if I well, I wrote it down. Maybe I didn't say that, but I was like, you know, 16. I tried to soften it because I said something like, you know, 16 goals in the last 15 minutes, and you know. Today, obviously, you know, it was a good finish. So maybe today it's just a case of that's how soccer goes. But what does sporting need to do to try to address this to resolve it going forward? It was something like that. Uh, so I got a little nervous, but I think I got through it. I I would have been nervous. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I I kept hearing your voice on that press conference about like, <laughs> is no one else there? Nope, literally. Like you're me. usually good for one question, maybe right. two. Right. If I'm feeling nice, I'll do two. It was just you, and I was like, this man is feeling himself tonight. <laughs> Give somebody else a chance to talk. C- come on. Uh, no, I was I was very grateful that Kurt gave me a heads up, because otherwise he would have been like, Dude. okay, we're opening it up for questions for Sporting KC manager Peter Ramiz, and I probably would have just sat there like expecting somebody else to ask the first question. Can't you see the attendees? Like, you saw that no one else was there? Not the way they have it set up. Oh, they have it blocked like that? Yeah, it's yeah set up like, a, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's a special way where you can't see anybody else, basically. Like presenter view or whatever, and like they, I, I have to like raise my hand, and then they have to give me permission to speak and such. So, hmm. so, uh, but it, it worked. They have you muted, like you're not muting yourself, and all. I have stuff. to unmute myself once they give me the ability to unmute myself. So I raise my hand, they call on me, and then I have to unmute myself to ask a question. Yeah, gotcha. So. I, I'd appreciate the heads up too, though. I wouldn't want to just be on there and be like, okay, any more questions, Jimmy? And you'd be like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, who? <laughs> what? Nobody else. Um, it was me, but. But I, when I asked him, I was like, you kind of weathered the storm in the first half. I had a chance. And, and he was like, honestly, it, they're the home team. Like, we were waiting for them to bring the game to us. And they just never really brought the game to us in the first half. Like, nobody really, it, it just kind of, and, and I, I agree with that. I think for a majority of the first half, you know, Sporting had a couple of set piece chances here and there. And Johnny had a free kick and a corner kick and whatnot. But it really wasn't until about 30, 32 minutes in where, Red Bulls probably should have scored, but uh, they uh, they didn't get their chance until, yeah, it's the 33rd minute where um, Boulder just kind of misplays a slide, and uh, Red Bulls have basically a wide-open shot on goal, and uh, Manuel for the Red Bulls, I don't know, he's going to want this one back, but he just sends this one wide right. It's not good. No, it's not good. Um, that guy... Had an open goal, dude. I don't, I don't understand how how he missed that. I think it's like he leaned too far backwards or something when he tried to take the shot, and like it didn't, it didn't get like it wasn't like it was cleared off the line. He just sends this one off target and just. And I, I tweeted about it. I was like, I don't really know how he missed that. And a Red Bulls uh, Bob from I eighty Sports, we've done his podcast before. He goes, "That's because Manuel's the worst finisher in the entire league, and probably worst in the USL as well." So, but he's a Red Bulls fan, so he's uh, he's a little done with him. But standing, it was uh that was really their their first chance of the game, and you know after that there was 
not a whole lot going on uh, for the remainder of the half. There was seven minutes of stoppage time. You know, there was a little bit of a, a scrum um, in where uh, Red Bulls again had a, a chance, and I think it was Manuel again just couldn't redirect it on frame. But for the majority of the first half, it just really was uh, the one chance from the Red Bulls, and, and Sporting kind of weathered the storm. So. You pretty much, I liked. Uh... Man, I liked Kyrie's intensity in this game. Uh, Absolutely. I remember, you know, one time Johnny got fouled and people were chirping and everything. And Kyrie got right in there like, get away, you know, get out of here. And they got in Kyrie's face and he was he was saying something. I wish he was yeah. mic'd up or something like that. But um, you're right, man. Even on these highlights, dude, it's not a it's not a huge back and forth thing. I mean, there's not clear cut chances, but uh, except for that Manuel wide right uh, a couple times couple times yeah and uh, so I, I was i was watching him after bob from i80 had said he's the worst finisher in the entire league in usl and, and yeah he's he he had some some misses that a professional soccer player needs to do better with so i i, I get the frustration if you're a red bulls fan there um right before was it right before halftime i think it was um danny rosero got hit in the head uh, it was a head-to-head collision, and and this was a really weird one for me because at first it looked like the Red Bulls player took the brunt of it, and Rosero kind of walked away. And next thing I know, the camera cuts back, and Rosero's on the ground, and he was like laying on his arm, kind of funky. And I was like, "That's not good," because that means it was more of like he thought he was good, walked away, and then just almost like a delayed fall to the ground. And uh, he subbed out for Castellanos at that point. I, I haven't heard an update, at least as of this recording, on, on the state of Danny Rosero, but obviously hope he's okay because head injuries are, are nothing to mess around with. No, nothing to mess around with. And he's quite important to this team. He is, man. I mean, he's the only friggin' one who can score off of set pieces. Sure he's- seems that way. Um, however, th- this this goal in the second half from Sir Alan Polito looks like it could have been off a set piece the way he headed it down to himself and just slots it in goal like it was it was gorgeous it was gorgeous and uh you know it was my favorite thing about this goal I think is the determination from Sporting Kansas City because this was a loose ball and this is the type of ball that um it's easy to sort of lose your focus on and the Red Bulls just clear it away and this little scoop from Mr. Jake Davis yeah I mean this is this is next level where he just scoops it up and over to Polito who does well to bring it down and score but but it's set up by that scoop from Jake you know what's a cool moment, dude? Like when you're a younger player like Jake Davis and you put in this excellent assist to world class striker Alan Polito, mm-hmm. who, who should be a world class striker. Yeah. Let's not MVP. let's not count anything else that's going this year. Okay, he should be. And and that Alan's pointing at him like, "Hey, great great assist!" And it's like Jake's like me me. And they're like they're like dogs, man. That would make me feel so good as a twenty something year old kid. And this multi-million dollar international soccer player is is thanking me for the ball. Well, it was both Polito and Johnny who they were running together and they were both pointing back at Jake and they were just so happy. And and credit to to Eric Tommy, uh, because he was the one who kind of sort of got in there and mucked up the play and, and originally uh, it was so won- mucked back for sport. The ball couldn't get out. It was like it went back to New York, bounced off them, but we got it. Eric kind of got it and and just dishes it off to uh well, Polito. actually, he didn't dish it off to. He tried to dish it to Polito, but a New York Red Bulls player kicks it away, and it goes to yeah. Jake. This was just a clusterfuck of a goal for really, but the finish was world class. It, I mean, yeah, the credit to Polito. He hasn't scored. I, I want to say, is it since May? Maybe was his last league goal. Um, it's been a long time since he scored a goal. Chips in, you know, stats. I'm sure it's in here. <laughs> um, so it's uh, I, I'm I'm very very glad that. Uh, Polito was able to to get that goal because um, he needs to get one. Uh, is, is did Chip send a bunch of stats? For, he didn't send them to me this week, so is, is now a good time for it to go through Chip's uh, Chip the keeper of stats. I don't see why not. Uh, let's, let's do, do that. We are back, snatching a draw from the league leader and conceding draws despite conceding late in true sporting fashion. Even so, I'm not mad at getting a point away from a team which we haven't historically matched up against well. Only problem, we're now tied on points against St. Louis, and I know that a lot of SKC fans would like to finish above our neighbors from the other side of Missouri. After the events of last weekend, we're now sitting at eight points behind ninth place with only six games left, 
leaving us at 2.67 points per game in the last six matches of the season in order to hit that 44 points line. So, you know, not mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, but not exactly sitting pretty either, especially since only one of the final games we have is against a team in that last one's in when it comes to the playoffs, which is home against Minnesota. The other games, away against Seattle, who's fifth in the table, home against Colorado, who's fourth in the table, home against LAFC, who's second in the table, and away at Dallas, who's 10th in the table. Dallas is only two points away from ninth in the West, so who knows what things will look like come then, but we have our work cut out for us. For me, and the thousands of others who are saying the same thing, the only thing that matters for the rest of the season is the Open Cup. The game against the Red Bulls was odd, especially given SKC's 40% possession, our lowest since July 4th at Colorado. But 40% possession, four shots total, and only one on target? This sounds an awful lot like the smashing we were handed by Columbus. To have the stat sheet we had while also getting a draw is nothing I'm going to complain about. I'd imagine that Red Bull fans are going to hate that result more than we are, even though they almost dropped all the points at home. They had to have a super sub and 16-year-old Julian Hall come on in the 81st minute, only to ram one home in the 89th. It does put Julian in at 101 minutes played this season and 1.78 goals per 90, the now second highest goals per 90 in the league. Congrats, kid. But we can look towards the Sunday match, away against Seattle. WrestleMania with Mr. Rock Bottom himself, Tim Melia. I mean, at least I assume that he'll get the start. I didn't realize just how much that play lives in the heads of Seattle fans, but it's apparently holding strong. We're not winning tons of games this season, so I guess frustrating the other teams is a nice consolation prize. If nothing else, I want Timmy to come out of the tunnel with some sort of WWE belt on just to poke the bear. That'd be amazing. Seattle is sitting at 1.8 points per game in their last five matches, including a recent 4-0 thumping win against Columbus last weekend. With the draw against the Red Bulls, SKC has dropped to 1.6 points per game in their last five matches, which is still better than a vast majority of our stretches this season, but not nearly enough to sustain a playoffs conversation. Seattle is 6-5-2 and five and two at home this season compared to SKC's 2-3-9 and three and nine record away. Seattle is one of five teams in the league which has fewer than one goal allowed per game while at home, so we will definitely have that hill to climb. Given that SKC is 22nd in the league in terms of goals forced per game while away, and Seattle seems to be halfway decent at preventing said goals, let's just get one early and then hope for a famous Seattle rainstorm that ends the game then and there. Being without Jake Davis will be moderately painful too, but we may have Memo back as he played one minute of stoppage time against the Red Bulls. Those are the first minutes, uh, minute or whatever. It's the first playing time he has had since the game in mid-July against the Quakes. Let's just keep people from getting hurt before Open Cup. Lastly, I had mentioned on the August 19th pod that Joaquin Fernandez, our new Spanish acquisition from the Turkish club, was injury prone. Mob currently has him listed as having a groin injury dated September 6th, which is 24 days after the announcement that we signed him. He is expected to return in early October. Sigh. Yeah, it's... uh, Well done. Thank you, Chip. Appreciate that. It's not great that the the guy who was already injured before signed kind of got injured again and uh, is now delayed again, but... You know, that's sort of the the way things go. Um, We all kind of thought that would happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's not not ideal. Um, And it wasn't ideal that Sporting gave up a a goal in the 89th minute. And this was a a very frustrating goal for Sporting to give up. Like you said, or Chip said, it was, you know, Hall scored the goal who's played very few minutes. Um, Peter was upset with how this goal was scored. He didn't think uh, Castellanos did a good enough job clearing it out. Um, Volader didn't really close down. And, And so, yeah, this is a goal that Peter says shouldn't have been given up and should have been cleared out better and should have been handled better defensively. So. Look, we about had a second when Eric Tommy was off sides in like the 63rd mm-hmm. minute. I mean, it was not very far off sides, yeah. but God, it was exciting to see. Um, but the you know, late minute goals, man, like we've we've had them before. No team likes those. It's messed up. It should never happen. Um, you know, Red Bulls are probably feeling pretty good about salvaging that game uh, with a point. Well, and, and what sucks is that... Um, we're not going to have Jake Davis for the next league match because Jake Davis was uh, issued a, a second yellow card that I would say, if you want to call it a foul share, I, I 100% agree with Peter here. And I'm not trying to blame Peter or, or Peter, blame refs, like Peter. Did he get fined? Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen him get fined yet. Uh, they haven't announced anything yet, at least as of okay. this recording. But I think he's 100% right. I think that if you want to call it a foul, fine, but it's it's not a second yellow. Um 
it, it that was a very harsh second yellow to to, to show and he and I got his first in like the 86th minute right right and so it was you know it wasn't Jake didn't pull him down from behind intentionally he didn't grab him like I think he's making a legitimate play on the ball if you want to say it's a foul okay but it wasn't you know he wasn't the last man there I just I think a second yellow in that situation was a little harsh I also think 100 percent if you look at Kyrie getting fouled in the 80th minute there's a legitimate shout for a penalty kick there. Again, I'm not saying these are the reasons that Sporting lost, but it, you know, I understand that it's frustrating when these things happen. So, um, you know, VAR had a chance to to look, and apparently they they decided that it wasn't enough for a penalty. I thought it was. I've seen less given, but it is what it is. So, you know, we need to talk about how this goal um, kind of made Tim Melia. Control alt delete for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> he, he just he was moving to his left. The ball went to his right, and he just goes, "Yep," <laughs> and falls backwards. Just brick them. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was a good finish by by Hall. Um, and, and it just is it again very frustrating. The 89th minute that this uh, this was given up, and then the red card after that. So you know it'll be interesting to see what happens in the midfield against Seattle um, in the next match. Uh, Remy Voltaire maybe can can go a full game again, so maybe Remy Voltaire uh, sneaks in there in place of Jake Davis and plays alongside Zorn Basong. We know Hold that. Now. Can, we, can we dispute this, though? Can we, like, can't you challenge a red card or something? Uh, y- you can appeal. Yeah, uh, appeal. There you go. I don't know... I'd have to look, and I don't have time to look while we're live recording, but I don't sure. know if you can, since it's technically a second yellow, Yeah, I don't know if you can appeal a second yellow that's turned into a red. Matt, uh, uh, you might bullshit. be able to appeal, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can appeal and see if you can get that suspension lifted, but yeah, that's about it. So um, it'd be great to have him because Radia is a ways away apparently his his injury is still lingering and th- he's not going to be back for a little while so wonderful that midfield is is uh still not going to be at full strength so it'll probably be um i would guess uh eric tommy uh remy voltaire and zoran basong midfield i don't know maybe memo gets in there a little bit more because memo made a, a hot second appearance for for sporting in this game but uh, well, i look at this this is why this is why we have a producer, dude, who can do the looking up for you when you, you don't go. got time to look for things. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate that. He s- says it looks like you can appeal if it's a second yellow. I, I thought there probably was a mechanism for doing it. Uh, it's just sometimes there are weird rules about, you know, if it's a yellow, you can't review or it has to be a red card. or you, once. But once you go to review, then sure, you can start giving yellows if you want to. So. Don't you only get so many appeals per season? You only get so many appeals. And, and I don't think uh, Sporting KC has... Uh, used all of their appeals. So here's here's the official wording of the rule. Clubs may request an appeal with the independent review panel to request a review to rectify a case of a clear and obvious error relating to an on-field disciplinary decision of match officials for one of the following. Red cards, second yellow cards in a match that red cards or a second yellow card in a match that results in a player suspension. So they can't appeal. So I, that this would, I think, be a case where appealing would be very legitimate if sporting kc wanted to do it i don't know what the chances are of it getting overturned but i think it's a it's a good opportunity for them to go through the appeal process and see but well, we'll what have had to do it already right uh they have to appeal within 24 hours of i think rent. they would have already had to submit it but we wouldn't know as of this recording tell us nothing. what the result is now i think disco usually announces their uh the disciplinary committee usually announces their decisions i want to say like wednesday or thursday sometimes even so It'll, it'll be a couple days. Um, but, I mean, overall, yeah, sure, it was a decent defensive performance. I think, um, in particular, Kyrie Shelton actually had a really good match at right back. It is not his natural position. Um, I think he was very physical. Like you said, he was defending his teammates. He was doing a really good job preventing any real chances coming down that side. That's why I think for this you week... Know, I thought so, too. They put him in the team of the match day along with Alan Polito, so I think that's why for this week, Kyrie Shelton... Holiday to Celery, toast of the match because you, sir, played an incredible game out of your position. You're doing very well. Holiday to Celery, toast of the match, Kyrie Shelton. It's the right choice because Polito was on the bench for team of the match day. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, uh, I don't, I don't consider that team of the match day like that. Whenever I see like a players on the bench, I'm like, man, eh, well, not really. You know, it is it always is funny really. when they're on the bench. But yeah, Kyrie was full on team of the match day. So it's, it's it's almost like second. It's like second team, all big all league or something. All all Big Twelve or all American. Yeah, you know, it's not quite. You're like, yeah, I'm an all American, which like sure, it's cool, but. My dad yeah. clearly has some thoughts about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you not feed? Do you feed her? What's going on here? We already had her dinner. She's just in here with me. There's a dog across the street that started barking, and that got her all riled up. So that'll do it. Yeah, she's she's talking to him. So hopefully she calms down here in a minute, or I'll have to go get her a little treat. But um, saying she heard that word, now she's like, oh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> but uh, but now we we go on the road to Seattle, and Seattle's coming off a win against Columbus. In Columbus, Columbus had a weird goalkeeper oh. situation because their uh, their goalkeeper got oh. a red card, so they had to play a field position, a field player in in goal. I love when that happens. I think that's very funny. Uh, I I didn't expect Seattle to put that kind of uh, freaking thumping on Columbus, though. Seeing as you know, Columbus is arguably Columbus. the best team in the league, in my opinion. Right. You know, yeah. So I mean, this will be a tough game. I do agree with Chip. Just lean into the rock bottom. Honestly, sporting should put out WWE promos every day this week. Why would you not? That's missed opportunities. I, I just, I feel like you could be put Tim's face on like one. You remember those jib jab videos? You yeah. Those? Just do that. There's so much rock content from this past year. Have Tim coming out in the Hollywood rock, you know, final boss. Find that boss, and just do it. Go for it. Because what, I mean, we'll see how we're going to get mad. They're still mad. That came happened like six years ago. They're still a hell Yes. I don't know why we're not just trolling right now. Like, we're not in any kind of playoff position. It's going to take pretty much a miracle for us to even make the playoffs. I truly believe that. Yeah. Uh, we are not talking about the most important thing in Major League Soccer mm-hmm. in that NYCFC tweaked their logo. Did they really? You didn't see this? No, it's what's like that do? the same logo, but they, like, extended the words a little bit or like shortened the Y in the font. Like it, it was very weird. Uh, I don't know why it was necessary at all. NYC FC logo. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to look this up live so I can react. So they, Oh, they did. What in the world? But like, the, why you see a side? Are you looking at like a side by side? Yeah. Uh, cause it's, it's, if you just look at the new logo, you're like, Oh, is that not what, their logo was already it's it's interesting they're announcing an update to their crest as part of a quote wider expansion of the club's logo system um and apparently they're trying to i mean they updated the font a little bit like there's they like showing here the y and it's like inside the c and they they spread out new york city football club it's not different it's not really no. different it's you know they're they're kind of moving away from the Yankees of it a little bit. They got rid of that dark Yankee blue and they they made it more of a black color. So maybe they're trying to distance themselves from. I don't see that at all. That Yankees. still looks blue to me. The the image I'm looking at makes it look a little more black. Maybe it's just a bad yeah. image. But I mean, then they have some some black singular um, logo marks that don't have New York City Football Club around it. It's just NYC. Um, and apparently they're also trying to get away from the NYCFC acronym. Like they want people to start referencing them more as New York City Football Club or New York City FC, which I'm not going to do. No one's going to do that. No, that's that's not happening. It's like St. Louis City being mad that people don't capitalize city. Like, you chose your name. <laughs> you chose your name and right. people can do what they want to do. It's like calling it uh, El Trafico. LAFC and LA Galaxy, uh, they don't, people don't like that name, but it's like, screw you. It's not up to you. It's up do to you, the people. Do you know what, uh, what the nickname is for the Iowa versus Iowa State football game in college, college football? Oh, I feel like I do, but remind me. You said El Trafico, which is played off of El Clasico, which oh, is close like to what they call Cornico. El Asico, because it's usually a pretty terrible game. Oh no! So they call it <laughs> Elastico. I thought it was like going to be corn based or something. No, no, it's just two truly terrible programs most of the time. Then a that's upsetting. Really terrible, horrible offensive game. So, well, not everyone can have something as cool as the uh, Dylan's Grocery Store Sunflower Showdown. You know, that's true. That's <laughs> true. Um, that's interesting about NYC. I did not know that. So, it's horrible. My I, live I, reaction. I just news. 
I mean, they, they, they're they trying to modernize it, I guess, but I just, ah, this is, this is silly. So, hey, back to this Seattle game, man. We will have Willie Agata back. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like, I like getting him back in there. Um, but, you know, Roddy is injured. That That's upsetting. But, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we won't have Jake Davis, presumably. Yep. So it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. You got to, like you said, let's, up there. let's lean into the wrestling theme, dude. If anything, no other pod should be leaning into that wrestling thing. And if I know Jimmy, he's got some tweets in the ba- in the back pocket ready to come out. The wheels are turning. I might play around with some uh, some After Effects this week or Adobe Premiere. See if I can't get some uh, some motion tracking Tim Melia coming out on the uh, on the rock. Ready to do a little, little voiceover. Who's uh, Mama Morris? This is for you. <laughs> no, 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 go. No. Fuck that. You know? <laughs> Do it, I'm traveling more space wheels. all over Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever or who oh, did he with a rock, he rock bottom, I guess. So yeah, it'll be Mama Rogue on. Yes, for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what I can do. I, was, I might play around. No, I'm a fan. Those people hate us for oh, that they're game. Gonna be so mad if I can pull this off. They're what gonna was be that? Was so it 2020? Mad. It was so long ago. It was because I because I went, but wasn't it like? It was COVID time, so like I can't remember if it was twenty or twenty or twenty twenty one. Emilia, oh, it would have been twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one, October twenty twenty one. Yeah, and The Rock even responded. So I, I, you know, it's it's time to get that uh, that wrestling content out. Uh, there's no better time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, get that clout going, right? So, um, I don't know. I think it'll be a tough game if we if we get a, a, a draw. Objectively, it's a good result. It doesn't help us in the playoffs. Playoffs are out of the picture. So just just play well, be competitive. That's what I want to see out of this game. And you know, see maybe maybe do uh, Willie Agata up top and and have Polito on the bench so he can come in as a midfielder or a striker if he's needed because the midfield will be a, a little a little uh, shallow with injuries. There was a time, there was a time when when Seattle was struggling too earlier this year. They they were. They were not great, but they were making runs in the Open Cup as well. So it was like, whoa! Yeah. But uh, they got they got pretty hot recently, and it's going to be a very tough game. This is a tough game. Yeah, they're fifth place in the West. They're one point. Um, granted, they have played one more game than fourth place Colorado, but they're one point behind fourth place Colorado. So they're they're very motivated and challenging t- for uh, hosting a playoff spot. Um, you know, we're we're eight points behind, as as Chip said, with six games to go and. Both the eighth and ninth place team. Well, eighth is out of the question. The ninth place team, Minnesota, who are eight points ahead of us, have played one less game, so they have seven games to go. It's it's not happening. We know it's not happening. Finish above Seattle. Go win the Open Cup. Be competitive. Get some wins. Maybe ruin Seattle's season. That that will be good enough for me at this point, given the the standing of the current season. But that's what I'm at, man. Take care of everybody's health. Hit that Open Cup hard on on September 25th. Yeah. Uh, Hot damn, that's gonna be a nine thirty game as well. So be late. Get your caffeine out. It's gonna be late. So, but hey, it'll it'll be interesting to see what happens in Seattle. Um, is there anything else about sporting you want to mention before I go back to this U.S. game just real quick? Um, no, I think we touched. Nothing. On it. I mean, it's a bummer of a result, but it is what it is. Uh, as we mentioned, U.S. men's national team came to uh to to play uh Canada. At Children's Mercy Park, I would say this stadium was close to half full. Maybe I mean that was that's maybe being a little, a little generous, but uh, you know there was there was plenty of other stuff going on. As we all know, Canada won. Um, this game didn't feel particularly close. It was a pretty terrible performance from the U.S. men's national team. They were outshot seventeen to eight by Canada, even though the U.S. outpossessed them. It just felt like Canada was the stronger side basically the entire game. It was, quite frankly, a boring game from the U.S. men's national team. It felt like the worst of the Bear Halter teams were playing out there, just not inspiring, uneventful, uninteresting soccer. Um, and courtesy of Paul Carr, um, Canada won on U.S. soil for the second time in 27 away meetings with the U.S. men's national team. Canada's only other road win over the U.S. Um, was in 1957, when they won three to two in a World Cup qualifier in St. Louis, so congratulations, St. Louis! You invented the U.S. losing to Canada on home soil. So at least you can have that claim to fame. But <laughs> I don't know, man. It just was a bummer of a game. Um, there's reports now that uh, 
the U.S. Soccer Board of Directors are um, getting together to approve uh, the hiring of, of Mauricio Pochettino as the U.S. Men's National Team Manager, which would be great if that can happen. He's a, a, about as successful of a coach as, as the U.S. Men's National Team can hire. He has his work cut out for him. This is um, there's a long way to go before 2026 to make this team competitive on the international stage. Beyond, I mean, the best thing that happened in this game was Stephen Afrifa made his debut for Canada in front of his home stadium at Children's Mercy Park. He played like three minutes, but he got in. Pretty awesome. It was a it was a weird situation. I don't know um, if you got to see it at all at the end, but. Um, Jesse Marsh, who is the the manager for Canada, got a free fun one other player up, and, and he was trying to make the debut. And the center ref missed like three different substitution windows. And then when he did look over, the fourth ref was having trouble getting the numbers put into the substitution board. So he told the the center ref to keep it going and move on. And Jesse was livid. He was losing his mind at the refs because I think at that point he's looking up. There's like two three minutes left. I think he just wanted a free foot to get in the game in front of the home crowd because finally when it happened, he like clapped to the ref and, and like thanked them and then like said something to a free foot. So I think it was truly just trying to get him in in front of his home crowd and would have been pissed if the ref mistakes prevented him from doing so. But hey, congrats to a free foot. Sporting case yeah. zone. Pretty cool. So. For sure. But other than that, yeah, just kind of a pretty lackluster uneventful and uh unfortunate showing from the the u.s men's national team and uh you know they got one more game in this in this window coming up and uh hopefully it's it's a better performance than they put on in in kansas city um that's uh tonight if you're listening on tuesday it's uh against new zealand uh in cincinnati so hopefully it's a, a little bit better of a performance but we shall see so you got anything else for our good listeners this week nothing else i just gotta thank you guys for being here it is uh getting rough to talk about this stuff and i'm sure it's getting rough to listen to this stuff so thank you for being here it's yeah it's always a good time getting out to children's mercy park or uh or uh cpkc stadium if you go out to the current games and, and just watching soccer hey make sure you listen to currently because there is a team a soccer team professional soccer team in kansas city that is good and is winning uh it's just not sporting kansas city so Head over sure. to uh, to make sure you're downloading and listening to currently with Dan and Chris and and get your uh, your Casey Current and Woso fix. There's some big Woso news this week with Alex Morgan unexpectedly retiring. So I try to have I try to have fun on both these shows, but I'd be lying if I said it, it wasn't a little more fun over there. Yeah, <laughs> I re- I saw a stat that like Temwa is the only current player to score a goal in league play in like the last three months or something like that for the like current for the current. Yeah, yeah. Because there have been these other side tournaments that they've played that other people have scored in, but in terms of actual just, like NWSL play, it's just tempo. That's not good. I mean, it just shows <laughs> that's our game plan and no one else is stepping up. I just, you know, I, I hate that. I hope sure she can exactly. increase these. I don't know. E- even Labonte, I'll talk about it tomorrow when we record, but I mean, even though, even Labonte jokingly said, like, oh, we just get the ball, get the ball to Timwa, and uh, that's our game plan. No, I'm just kidding. And I'm like, yeah. are you kidding? Yeah, that kind of feels like it is. <laughs> feels like uh, that is the game plan. Yeah. But anyway, thank you all for listening. Make sure you check out currently with Dan and Chris. Um, but yeah, thank you for being here. Make sure you follow us uh, on uh, Twitter and Instagram at No Other Pod at Dan Cooser at JC Max zero three. We still got that uh, KCSN hotline, the text line powered by Mint Mobile. So if you have not sent us a text message. Uh, make sure you do so at 913-407-6524. That's where you can send questions and comments to the KCSN hotline powered by Mint Mobile. Uh, and yeah, check us out on YouTube at KCSN Soccer. Send us an email, nootherpod at gmail.com. Make sure you leave us that five-star rating and review. But until next time, he's Dan. I'm Jimmy. We'll catch y'all later. See ya. Oh, what a night.